So uh, we're on the road this morning and uh, we're headed to Atlanta, Georgia um, amidst the, uh, I guess, second wave of the COVID pandemic. And um, we're pulling a trailer because we're on our way to pick up a car. Kevin in Atlanta, that's his uh, handle on the internet, and uh, we posted a, uh, an ad, if you will, on a uh, large forum and asked if anybody had a 928 Porsche roller. And uh, you might ask why a 928? Well, it's because we don't have one, right? Nope. <laughs> we don't have a 928. And um, that's what we need, another project. We need another project, <laughs> right. So we got the Crown Vic that uh, a lot of you have been following. Um, we, we've now sort of readjusted uh, our plans and we're going to shoot for Daytona, right? 2021 Daytona, yep. so hopefully we'll see some, some of you guys there. Um, we took the Killer V's to Carolina's Motorsports Park last last weekend, weekend before. Yeah, two weeks ago. And um, thrashed them uh, severely and the uh, car held up pretty well. Yeah, they did. We can talk about that a little bit. Sure. And um, so I was thinking on the I was thinking on the way over here to meet you this morning, Trotty. Uh -huh. um, this this will be your your third Porsche, right? How do you figure that? Well, there was the uh, the Bumblebee. Yeah. Oh, right. the 914. The 914. Man, I forgot about that car. The 914. So the 914 was, I had this uh, run of 914s for a while, and uh, I bought one for some parts, and, and you had to have it, yes. as I recall. Yep. Yeah, I remember it now. I actually forgot. That was what, when I was in high school? Maybe college? Yeah, college. You were in college. You were in college. Yeah. And we'll, so... I brought you that car, it wasn't running. No. Nope. Right? So your first Porsche wasn't running. And we're on the way to buy the third Porsche, which it's doesn't even have running. a motor. It's not running. <laughs> so it's not running. And um, the one in the middle, the 968 that you had. Yep. Mr. Kirby's got now. Yep. It, uh, tell us about tell us about the 914 first. From what I can remember, it was uh reason it was a bumblebee it was black and yellow I believe I think it had a yellow on the rocker panel maybe yep had yellow stripes was it like in a some kind of special edition I believe it was 1974 and Porsche came out with a special edition of 914s yeah. and um, they had the bumblebee which was the black 914 with yellow stripes right it said Porsche on the door negative stripe right and they also had a yellow one with an orange stripe that I think is commonly referred to as the cream sickle. Yeah. You know, come to think of it, man, this will be my fourth one. Because oh. remember I had a white one as a parts car. Do you remember the white one? So this is this is another nine four, not, not another Porsche that doesn't run. Right. You're on a roll, man. You're on a roll. Yeah. So so what whatever became the 914? You right. took it apart, right? Yeah, remember I built a rotisserie for it. Um, yeah. Took it all apart, and I don't really re remember what happened after that. <laughs> I remember taking it apart and was uh, beginning a restoration. Yeah. But one of those projects that never got finished. I did yeah, sell the white one, though. I remember that guy S came and got that. Sold the white? For like, I don't know, 100 bucks or less. That was, that was a 914, too, right? That was yeah. 914 also. Yeah. And we had the, actually... Uh, we had the 944 project that uh, that was just stripped out whole, right? Yeah. Sold that off, unfinished project. So this is like one, two, it's like project number five, unfinished project number five, Porsche wise. Yeah. Why do we keep doing this? I don't know, man. You're, you're, you're doing pretty well. <laughs> so, uh, so we're on our way to Atlanta, and and we're gonna we're gonna meet with uh, Kevin in Atlanta, and we're gonna buy his roller. We don't know what we're gonna do with it, but we have no idea. It's a pretty killer deal, so yeah, yeah for it's an good iconic. Deal. I mean, it really is an iconic car. 
Well, it's like it's like my wife's logic. Why did you buy this? It was on sale. So. It was on sale. <laughs> so, so. Yeah. We're, um, we're using the wife's logic today to buy a car. <laughs> That's right. There you go. Let's go get it. You're rolling. Hey, folks. So we told you we were going after a 928 this morning, and, and here it is. This is the shell we bought. And we're in Atlanta with Kevin in Atlanta on Renless. So Kevin, we appreciate uh, you uh, helping us out acquire this car and uh, trust is going to a good home. It's gonna be one of our, our projects on Midlife Motorheads. Right. So uh, we looked around here a little bit and uh, you're, you're gonna show us around, show us what you, what you got, what you do? Sure, this is what I do. I'm not so much a hoarder as I am a foster. A foster, okay. This example uh, came up from Texas. It has 42,000 miles on it and it had a significant side impact. Somebody in Texas tried to move it from being salvaged to be re, being uh, reconstructed. Uh huh. And it's got some options on you don't find on any other 928. Oh wow. This one comes with a beer top removal tool welded into it. <laughs> really? Not intentionally. Oh. You won't find that on any of the, there's not even, there's not even an option code for that. That's interesting. And it was hit so hard that the tank. Oh goodness. It was good. This it's whole, been moved over. Right, huh? the, this is a replacement door. It's a replacement quarter panel. Yeah, you can see it's taking quite a shot. Right. So I just bought that and uh, this is a blue 87 automatic and the plan is now to put this, the 89 drivetrain, into the blue one. So this is my third project in waiting. Interesting. Um, so that's a, I've got three projects. Is this a 32 valve? Yes. And, and what's, what's, what's the problem with this one? Um, the engine was overheated. Ah. Uh. So, and unfortunately, I didn't know that until I put it all back together. But it comes out the 43,000 mile drivetrain and eight, um, everything, the entire drivetrain, we're going to do a full swap. Maybe sometime I'll shoot a video, but we've got somebody that's got an actual um, support system that you can unbolt the entire thing down. Oh, wow. Onto it. And you can actually move it from one. It's actually mimics what they did um, in, in the, the factory. Track. Yeah. So is this an automatic or is this five speed? This is currently an automatic, but it's got to be a five speed when, when I'm done. done. Very cool. Yeah. And then over here under this sad, sad car cover is my 87. This is where my stroker motor is going. Ah. Are we going to see the stroker motor? Yeah, let's go take a look. Hey Kevin, how long have you been working on um, Porsche 928? Uh, since 95, I bought my first 86 and a half automatic um, from Poughkeepsie, New York. Um, it was driven by a guy out of the middle out of the Middle East where we would visit and he would drive down uh, down to Long Island with it. Uh -huh. The original owner was a, um, a a New York City assistant DA. So and it had the it had a hole in the bolster from the holster. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nothing yeah. like a suit and a gun. I'm just saying that <laughs> is a great wardrobe. <laughs> just says everything you need to know about me. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And so this is a um, 5.8 liter. The bottom end is an 86. We use an 86 because the cylinders are thicker with the 86 block. Okay. And then they're bored out to about 100-ish, 100 100 104, all right. And then I basically had a cross-drilled uh, GTS crank put in there. That gets me to my 5.8. Okay. All right. And there's nothing magical really beyond that if, except for, gosh, nothing. Um, and the pistons? The, the pistons are, five, are 968, the good ones, the mall. The lighter ones, the yeah. forged. So this is basically like off-the-shelf parts. Yes. To put the CO. That's that's fantastic. You too can build strokers for fun and profit. Yes. 
<laughs> exactly. And what's this little gem back here? Okay, so this is a 1990 GT that makes it a five speed. And I bought it from a gentleman up in Michigan who ran out of runway coming up to a stoplight. And so what we had to do, and I can probably furnish you pictures, but it was crushed on this side. So we basically cut it. You can't, I don't even think you can tell anymore. But we cut it right, right around here and then around there. Remove that. I took uh, another, uh, I took an 87 and I cut the, the, the same piece and had my guys here. Yeah. And they welded it in. Um, I pulled the engine, refreshed it, took it apart, made sure everything's perfect. Um, so hopefully, in the next couple months, this goes into um, into paint. I've got the fender and everything set aside. It's already been blasted. Back to red. Yeah. And um, the, the stroker car over here? Yeah. Did I hear you give it a nickname? Yeah, it's, it, it's got a burgundy inter interior, therefore its name is Ron Burgundy. Ron Burgundy. I'm most fascinated by the, the names people give their cars. Well, my first one, honestly, was in 86. We referred to it as the Mistress. And my belief at that time was that the Mistress would be cheap. What, the car would be cheaper than the Mistress. I think I was wrong. <laughs> So this is the, the scarlet red. It's kind of a rare color. Oh yeah. And this is the hole it's going to go into. Yeah, you would think, given these cars with their sort of stance, that there'd be more engine room, but it's it's pretty uh, pretty confined in there when you right. think about it. Right. Excellent. You have to have long skinny arms. That's that's what I've found out. Long skinny arms. It's really a, a good step in the right direction. Well, if we ever hire somebody in the shop, let's keep that in mind, Trotty. Long skinny, long skinny arm people. Like this? And this, that's your daily over there? Yeah, that's a uh, 1990 silver. That has, a, has an interesting history. So that car I got from somebody in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Uh -huh. and, and this is a true story. He bought it um, off of back of a Porsche shop. And it had been sitting there for quite a while. And the woman that owned it, she had uh, broken a timing belt. So she goes to Porsche and she says, I'd like you to fix this. And he said, sure, that'll be 25000 And that was 10 years ago. And she mm -hmm. says, I don't think I want to pay, pay $25,000. And she says, we only replace engines. We don't really fix it. So it just sat in the back. And so the, the previous owner, he took it. He took the engine apart. He pulled the heads. And he, did, he thought he had a score in one of the cylinders so they, then he decided what he wanted to do he, he wanted to hone it not a good plan what gets worse <laughs> so he um takes it all apart i mean splits the block and everything and then finds out that it's not inexpensive to do honing because so, tell us about that it's a special treatment in the cylinder right, walls. well yeah he thought it had a bad scratch and it really wasn't you, you can tell when you could finger your, your fingernail you know. fingernail on it so, but he was wrong about that. But the, the honing is, is you, you can use a paste. That's really all you have to do. But he thought it was much, he thought he was gonna have to have to bring the block and get it actually honed in a, in a you know, in, in a Sunin machine. I think Sunin makes one for, for doing uh, the Porsche, uh, for working with aluminum. So anyway, so he decided, he abandons that. Decides to, he's gonna buy a replacement engine on eBay. I'm telling you. This what could is, go wrong? <laughs> these, these are the steps. This is Dante's um, the steps into hell. Okay, so he gets. And please forgive me if you, the owner, ever sees this. I'm sorry. Um, Apologies. Man. <laughs> so he buys it. He puts it in, and it won't make oil pressure. No matter what he does, he doesn't make oil pressure. At that point, he does this. He says, "Screw it." He puts it up for sale um, on on Renlos. I come down. I buy it, and so I come down. You know, with a uh, an expedition, because I've got to fill the entire back of the expedition with you know, all the engine parts. Oh wow! Because when it was split, I mean, yeah. I, but in, and it, the uh, the heads had all been rebuilt, the, the crank had been cleaned. He had all the new bearings in it. So do that, put it all back together, and it's a fantastic car. I mean, yeah, I it love, sounds good. Oh, it really know, sounds good. It's got the small well, on the on our on the 928s. There's two flavors of resonators. There's smaller ones that are called the GT. Uh -huh. 
And then there's larger ones where it's suit pod, suitcase. Those have the GT, so it sounds really, really good. Yeah. So anyway, but fast forward till a year ago, and um, the gentleman that had sold me it, he needed uh, an exhaust or something. So he comes up, drives it, and of course he's having seller's remorse. And I said, whatever happened to that engine? He says, well, I took it, to I took it apart, and half the thrust bearing was missing. Hmm. It happens to the best of them now. They make mistakes like that. Or they put the bearings in upside down. I, but it was MIA, so it was never going to make any oil pressure. Wow. So I sold it up on eBay as a running used engine. And obviously, somebody had been in there and didn't put it together right. Yeah. Wow. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you, and thanks for showing us around your shop and uh, tell us a little bit about the 928s. That's, that's fantastic. And uh, Your own Rinless, is that correct? Yes. My uh, tagline is, is Kevin in Atlanta. Kevin in Atlanta. Right. So if anybody wants to reach out to you, has Absolutely. questions about 928s. Right. Cool. Very cool. Perfect. Thanks, sir. Thank you. A little COVID hangshot. I know. I know. <laughs>